morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this fine Sunday morning. A special welcome to our guests and visitors that are with us this day. It is a joy and a privilege to have you here with us as we gather to celebrate not only the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, but today is Christ the King Sunday. So that makes it the last day of the church year. Uh, we are currently in the year A, year of Matthew. So next Sunday will be Advent 1 and the starting of year B, the year of Mark. <laughs> So having been said, I invite you to stand as you were able and turn to page 94 in the front part of the red window. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. We also acknowledge the Diné and Hopi peoples, who are the traditional custodians of the Flagstaff area on which we meet, and we pay respect to the elders, past and present and present of all indigenous peoples of Arizona and the United States. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, beginning with a moment of silence. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, who strengthened you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, hymn number 389, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing the Kyrie. <clears throat>
not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel I put in <laughs> separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, and were naked and gave you clothing? And was it, when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will say to them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. As people who live in a democracy, as descendants of people who revolted against the tyranny of monarchy and celebrated that event annually, Jesus' parable today can be a little bit difficult for us to understand or even embrace. Jesus' parable begins with the words, When the Son of Man comes, in glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. That glory is not simply a bright light show that puts our 4th of July fireworks to shame. More accurately, that glory points to Jesus being the one who reigns over creation. Glory points to reigning. Not reigning, but you know, reigning. <laughs> And Jesus is the one who reigns as Christ the King. Thus, to be part of the church means that we do not live by democratic rule, ruled by the people. To be a disciple means that we acknowledge that we are ruled by God in Jesus, present in spirit. 
The church is not democratic, in other words, but pneumocratic, spirit-led. That said, it is important to understand how Jesus got to sit on that throne. Jesus gets to because he is fully God, the Word of God made flesh, and because he is fully human, born of Mary, and died on the cross in service to humanity. Jesus died on the cross to make a way through human suffering, through dehumanization and nothingness, in order to renew our way of being human, made in the image of God. In other words, to be human is to serve others, especially the least. This notion of serving the least was quite revolutionary. In fact, it was completely revolutionary for Jesus did, because the whole idea of serving the least made absolutely no sense whatsoever. You sought to serve the greatest, because then you could hope to gain status, protection, security, and maybe even a little prestige, if you were faithful enough. In other words, service was part of the rat race. Thus Jesus' way of looking at service upended the whole system. The first shall be made last, and the last, the least, shall be made first. <coughs> As such, this understanding of service was, at the very least, meant to help disciples to be set free from the fear of being the least. Service sets us free for the life of the reign of God that upholds not self-aggrandizement, I can say that word once, it will be a miracle, <laughs> but self-denial, not pride, but humility. Service sets us free to say no to the rat race, to world the games of promotion, hierarchy, prestige, and human privilege. Service is meant to transform us in our understanding and living out of what it means to be truly human. When seen in this life, we can see why Jesus praised the sheep, those who served the least. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to the least of me, or least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. By serving the least, the sheep rehumanized them and delivered them from nothingness. Likewise, the Son of Man scorned those who did not serve the least. These goats pursued power, and privilege, and because they didn't see the Son of Man in the least, they didn't see the least and did nothing. What was in it for them, after all? And in the process, they perpetuated dehumanization and nothingness, which the Son of Man came to end. We also must take care to understand that service can still be abused. <coughs> Service that allows you to stay in control is not necessarily service. The whole notion of the white man's burden, saving those savages from their barbarism and backward culture, was not and is not service. That is hubris, a perpetuation of dehumanization. Serving because it makes you feel good is not service that is, self-service. Or if you serve, but fear that you are being used, then it is probably not service either. You see, the spiritual discipline of service is not so much about serving as it is about being a servant. Being a servant is being open to responding when called upon. You are not in charge. But in order to do that, you have to be willing to practice another spiritual discipline, the one of submission. Sadly, the discipline of submission is probably the most abus abused discipline there is. Rather than lift people up and set them free, it has been used to subjugate and dehumanize people for millennia. The purpose of the discipline of submission 
is to teach us not to make everything about me. Submission is meant to set us free from the burden of always needing to just stubbornly get your own way, thereby making others your slaves and dehumanizing them, so that you are instead free to live out thy will be done. Counterintuitively, submission is meant to free us from bondage and manipulation so that we are free to love our neighbors, to subversively undo hierarchy, thereby creating equality and equity for all. In Jesus' day and before, instructions were only given to slaveholding men on how to treat their slaves and wives, ethically. Instructions were never given to slaves, wives, the poor, or the least. When Jesus told people, in other words, to go the extra mile, when a soldier compelled them to carry their, those soldiers' 100-pound packs, Jesus was instructing people to practice submission, to not carry the pack for one mile as the law compelled them to do against their will, but to go two miles or more by choice. This was the way back to one's freedom and to love one's neighbor at the same time. When Paul, for example, told slaves to submit to their masters and wives to their husbands, this was intended to empower people in their dehumanizing positions of leastness. Paul was saying, don't do it because you were told or ordered to do something. Do so because you have chosen to serve, as a servant, out of love. Love is your power that others can't take away from you because it comes from God first. Then, after having said that, Paul then tells, Paul told the slaveholding men to love their slaves and their wives. In effect, Paul told those in positions of power to submit to their slaves and wives. If you are confused on how this could possibly work, consider Paul's letter to Philemon. And then Paul writes to his friend and fellow Christian Philemon, whose slave Onesimus had run away to Paul. Onesimus served Paul as a servant faithfully for several years. When Paul realized that Onesimus and Philemon needed to be reconciled back to one another. So Paul sends Onesimus back, telling him to submit to his master. And in the letter, Paul begs Philemon to not only accept him back as a slave, but as a brother in Christ. That brother in Christ was important because if Philemon were to take his faith, the Christian way of life, seriously, that would ultimately require Philemon to release Onesimus as a slave. Thus, the least, the lowest, would subversively be lifted up, and the greatest, those of the highest places, would be brought down. The high places would be made level, creating equality and equity among humanity, who live as truly human, people fit to live in the reign of of God. In Jesus' parable today, we are called to live out the spiritual disciplines of service and submission to one another and to Jesus. Even in the face of our historic loyalty to democracy and anti-monarchical tendencies, as disciples of Jesus, we are called to bend the knee and submit ourselves, our heart, mind, body, and strength, our whole lives, to Christ the King. This may grate on our sensibilities, but let us not forget that Jesus first practiced submission and service, not only before God, but before all of humanity, including you and me, when he carried the cross and died to set us free from sin, death, and evil, from dehumanization and nothingness. It is counterintuitive, counterintuitive for us to think that submission to God equals freedom 
And that failure to submit results in dehumanization and nothingness. But in rising from the dead, Jesus shows us the truth of the matter. So, let us practice what it means to be truly human, made in the image of God. For that is what we are being prepared for. The reign of God prepared from for the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of ELCA, World Hunger, and Partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the fields. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we know merciful judgment, guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision making. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are neglected. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, 
We feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, and surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who suffer, especially Steve, Kim, Rich, Nick, Dolly, Minnie, Molina, Joe and family, Bridget and family, Sheila and family, <coughs> Cynthia, Michael, Anne Marie, Laura, Jess, Jeff, William, Kyle and family, Mike, Nancy, John, Julie, Caden, Jeannie, Jane, Paula, Aurora, Brenda, David, Alexandra, Elizabeth, Jacob, Mike, Rebecca, Tammy and family, Aiden. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ we are made, the people of his pasture. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Well, what else do the people of God pray? For the children of the Lord. All people living in war zones. Okay, I'm just not going to hit that. All freedom fighters. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Holy God in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, in particular, we lift up to you Dorothy Jean and uh, Karen and the rest of the family as they mourn uh, Dorothy's passing. Lord, receive them all into your arms of grace and love. Comfort them, renew them in this time of grief. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. Let us greet one another in that same Amen. peace. <laughs>
offering prayer. Let us pray. God, God of field and forest, sky and sea, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our joy and our privilege, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to relive me. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to relive me. Having been made one in the Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and you everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, hymn number 634, the red hymnal, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Amen. 